super glad that summer is like finally happening. Like the weather is actually nicer. I get so hype for that shit. I always forget that I have seasonal affective disorder until I'm coming out of it. <laughs> yeah! Hell yeah to that. It's a good feeling. Mental stability is like, okay, I get what all the fuss is about. I, you know, most people with seasonal affective disorder, they get like very depressed and tired and unmotivated. I just get catastrophically horny. <laughs> it's like somebody took a group of college freshmen to their first house party, bought them a case of Natty Light and a pack of Lifestyles, and was like, have it. <laughs> Some people say their body is a temple. Mine's a fucking frat house. <laughs> Everything's sticky. You don't know why it's that sticky, but you also know that you don't want to know why it's that sticky. Uh, and my seasons always start off with an objectively bad sexual decision. Like, I'm talking friends, co-workers, both at the same time. Nothing good. Nothing good is starting off this streak. But I've ended so many otherwise non-sexual relationships with sex that it's kind of my go-to move. Like, if we've been friends for a long time and I start coming on to you, your first thought should be, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, what did I do? I thought things were going so well. <laughs> it's like, you're getting fired right now, but here's a pretty good severance package. <laughs> Little something to remember us by. I recently did this with one of my friends of eight years, which if you're friends with somebody for eight years and nothing's ever happened between you, there's probably a reason. <laughs> like, you probably just should not. But we started planning hooking up together, which the only thing more uncomfortable than hooking up with somebody for the first time is planning to hook up with somebody for the first time. <laughs> So he gets to my place, and I'm thinking, like, we've been talking about this, like, let's just rip the band-aid off of it, let's just do it, which everybody wants their sexual encounter to be described as ripping the band-aid off, right? <laughs> he had different ideas. He thought that some really fun foreplay would be talking about his ex-girlfriend for two hours, <laughs> which is a ginormous red flag. Like, you should never hook up with somebody who's, like, talking about their ex-girlfriend in front of you like that. So, of course, I still had sex with him. <laughs> <laughs> and it lasted five minutes. <laughs> and that's fine. Like, I don't care. I'm flattered that you're having that good of a time right now. But you're not off the hook when that happens. So he gets up and he starts getting dressed. I'm like, okay. This guy likes to be fully clothed when he goes down on women. <laughs> <laughs> He proceeds to get dressed and starts leaving my apartment, but not before first turning around to me, looking me dead in my eyes and saying, thanks, dude. <laughs> the last thing you want to hear after you've just been sexually intimate for a full five minutes of your life. <laughs> so obviously I had to fire that friendship. To the, to the degree where he knows he could not put me on his resume. He's going to have to make up something else for what he was doing during that time. Because I'm not giving him good reference. That was a terrible work ethic. Does not work well with others. Yes! Not a team builder. Unfortunately, though, thanks, dude, is not the worst thing a man has said to me after sex. I had another guy say, uh, nice meeting you. I'll add you on Facebook. Guess who didn't fucking add me on Facebook? <laughs> it's like, it's like fine though, because this guy, like, all right, keeping your socks on during sex, I feel like it's fine because there's not really a sexy way to take your socks off unless you're like into that. It's more just about convenience and like comfort and like the older you get, the more you're like, let's just like, let's just make this happen. That's fine. Leave your socks on. I don't care. He also wanted to leave his shirt on, which I'm not necessarily opposed to. However, this guy's shirt was a fully fleece, button-down, <laughs> rainbow print and checkered covered flannel. Yes! <laughs> and I tried, you guys. I really tried to get that shirt off. I was really unbuttoning it. And frankly, if we're being honest right now, he took way too long of letting me unbutton it before he started rebuttoning it back up. <laughs> I worked. I worked too hard for that. I have mild arthritis now because of that. But I was like, fine. Leave your damn ass flannel on. I don't even care. 
But then I had a realization that it was like I had gone to Spencer's and bought like a gag teddy bear. Like, it's so cute with his little flannel and his little socks and oh my god, that's a penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try to describe my dating life to my mother, who's like, you're young and single, like, what's, what's that life like? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> my mom, like, her, what she wants me to tell her is about how, like, I don't know, I might fuck around and go get lunch with this guy next week. <laughs> might get really risky and, like, let him put his arm around me tonight. <laughs> That's what she expects out of her youngest daughter. I can't tell her what a violent fucking cesspool dating culture actually is right now. <laughs> But uh, I'm trying to be more honest about it. So the other day, she was like, what'd you do last night? And I was like, I spent the night somewhere. And she was like, where? And I was like, a boy's house. And she said, oh. And she said, well, do you like him? And I said, no. And she said, oh. <laughs> and then she immediately tried to change the subject. She was like, spring cleaning, though. You cleaning your apartment? You cleaning your fucking life up, dude? <laughs> and I said, no. And she said, oh. <laughs> And in this moment where my mother is like peak disappointed in me, I also had to tell her that I accidentally used one of her CVS coupons. Oh my god. And uh, I don't, like, I, my mom and I share a CVS card, which I think is very fucking generous. Like, I give her all of the points. I go to the cashier and like, hey, you have a $5 coupon, you want to apply it? And I'm like, no, that's for my mommy. <laughs> and they're like, I don't know, dude, like, you seem pretty old, you probably just get your own CVS card. And they're never as impressed with it as they should be. And in this particular instance, though, it was a self-checkout, and it automatically applied an $8 CVS coupon to my purchase. $8 is big fucking money. Yes. And I had to tell my mother that, like, we haven't talked since then, and I don't know that it's related, but I'm not saying it's unrelated. <laughs> That's my set, guys. My name's Megan. Thank you so much. <laughs>